Hello, I'm Josh. And I'm Ashley. Uh, we're from The Way Away, and this is our top tips for getting the most out of your economy flight. Tip number one is to do online pre-check. When you purchase your ticket, you get your flight information. 24 to 48 hours, you should pre-check in online to your flight. This will avoid long lines for you as well, in theory, as well as them putting you on standby. So you know exactly where you've been sitting. You have your flight ticket already taken care of. All you need to do is check your bags in and go through security. It makes it a very simple process. What can happen sometimes is if you don't check in early enough and the flight is overbooked, which is happening a lot these days, yeah. especially on economy flights, is that they may try and bump you from the plane. And they said, well, you didn't check in, someone else checked in, the plane is overbooked. Mm -hmm. But if you check in an, a day or two days before the flight happens online, you yeah. can pretty much avoid this happening, or at least really minimize the chances of it happening. Tip number two. Pick a time of day to fly when you are at your best. <laughs> if you can, schedule a little bit of extra time to get there. So for me, that means I do not like to fly overnight. I hate red-eye flights. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm dead the next day. I might as well have flown the next day instead of overnight to save time. It just does not do anything for me. Sometimes a daytime flight will cost $20 yeah. to $40 extra, but for me, that can be worth it because I'm gonna be grumpy and upset and tired and miserable and sometimes my body physically gets in pain just because I flew at a bad time of day. You can call me a wimp all you want, but I'm 31 years old, dang it, I'm getting old and I'm gonna make the most of my economy flight. So for me, that means I'm gonna fly during the day and if I have to pay a tiny bit extra to get a slightly better schedule, that's the best way for me to enjoy my flight. But we are budget travelers so many times. The cheapest and best flight would be early or late for us because it's more within our budget. So when you do get those flights, tip number three would be to get a hotel close to the airport um, because we find that if you have a 6 a.m. flight, you have to get there two hours earlier, which means the transportation in the city or outside the city probably doesn't work. So getting a taxi is gonna be much more expensive than maybe renting a Airbnb or a hotel close to the airport. We've found this many times that the public transportation just shuts down maybe at, from midnight and then doesn't even start till 7 a.m. Um, and so even paying extra for the flight might be better. It's just doing kind of the um, process of finding out what is going to be cheapest for your budget. But sometimes it doesn't work the way that you hope. <laughs> so it just makes it easier to rent something very close to the airport so that you have easy access um, whether you have an early morning flight or a very, very late flight. There's been times where we, we stayed so close to the airport that we could just walk to the terminal in about mm -hmm. 30 minutes, and that saves a bunch of money on a taxi yeah. ride because we could just walk early in the morning, we didn't have to wait for any transportation, we're good to go. But it took me about a year to figure this tip out, so <laughs> now I am sure to do it. Tip number four, and this goes along with our first tip about pre-check-in. Yeah. When you get that boarding pass after you do your pre-check-in, read the PDF that they email you. Pretty much every airline will send you a PDF copy of your boarding pass. Open up the PDF file, read the fine print, because some airlines will charge you extra, and I don't mean a little extra, I mean like 50 to $60 extra to physically print your boarding pass when you get to the check-in desk because they require you to have a physical copy of that boarding pass that they just sent you. Yeah, I know EasyJet and Ryanair in Europe require this. Mm -hmm. um, EasyJet actually now has recently um, started an app where you can do yes. it on the app, which is really helpful because finding a place to print your tickets can be very, very difficult. Yeah, while on the road. Mm -hmm. So just make sure to read the fine print and you should be good to go. Tip number five, we carry bags that are very squishy, um, yeah. easy to compact. Um, our tip would be to carry bags like this because with budget airlines, to be able to put it in the cabin, you have to be able to have it fit in one of those carton things that yeah, they... Like a, little, a bag checker, a bag size checker thingy. <laughs> so many times we've seen people try to fit their hard luggage in those things, but it just doesn't work. 
um, our bags, we can literally take a jacket out or some clothing out and our bags will actually get smaller. So we can carry them on to many airlines. Um, especially Ryanair, we can carry both of our baggage on and not have to pay extra. Nowadays, almost every single airline will make you pay extra to check your luggage um, so that it goes underneath instead of up up in the cabin. And backpacking backpacks do not count because that hard metal frame will not allow it to be compressed and they usually don't fit in any of the, ch uh, the carry-on bag checkers. So we use a company called Tom Bin. They make extraordinary bags that are basically good for your entire life. Um, they're expensive, but they're totally worth it, and there are many other companies that do something similar to this, but it's like a glorified duffel bag, and mm -hmm. ours has backpack straps that tuck away as well. Something like this is what we found to, to be what works best for us when we fly economy. Tip number six, since we're already talking about luggage, try and book your flights with the same airline um, for your whole duration of the, your flight. So if you stop somewhere, try to book the remainder of your flight with the same company, such as Delta or whatever. If you don't, then most likely you will have to go and get your luggage from uh, the luggage place. Yeah. <laughs> and then actually check it back into the next uh, carrier. Whereas if you have the same carrier the whole time, then it will take your luggage from A to B instead of you having to stop in the middle, put it on um, to the next flight. That takes so much time. You don't always know if you have a very long period of time in between. Um, so we've ended up running to flights because we've had to move our luggage from one airline to the next. Mm -hmm. And now we're actually getting to the airport. All of this is happening before you've even gotten to the airport. So as you're preparing for your flight, as you're physically going to sit on your flight, especially if it's gonna be more than a two to three hour flight, then you're going to want to be hydrated. I know this might sound really basic, but if you are not hydrated, you're gonna get really cranky and grumpy, your legs are gonna get yeah. stiff, your body is just gonna feel gross. And oftentimes, it's really uncomfortable to get up, shuffle past three people to go use the bathroom at the back, and there's already a line of eight people waiting to go to the bathroom. So my tip, something that I do almost every time I fly, economy, it doesn't matter. I drink a lot of water two to three hours before we leave to go to the airport or before our flight time. So that way, by the time I get to the airport from taking transportation, maybe before or after security, I can use the restroom and get rid of all that water that's passed through my system, but my body stays hydrated so that when I get on the plane, I don't have to drink a lot of water and continue to use the bathroom. This may sound kind of weird, but being hydrated is super important, especially when you're flying for long periods of time. And along with this, bring an empty water bottle with you. If you go through security, they will make you empty out any water bottles that you have, but usually on the other side, you can fill your water bottle mm -hmm. up at a water fountain so that you can have more water while you're on the flight and don't have to um, figure out what you're going to do or purchase a water bottle that's mm -hmm. very expensive at the airport. Bonus tip, sometimes if you go to an, a restaurant and ask nicely, they'll just fill your water bottle up there if there is no water fountain. Pack some snacks, some things that you like before you get to the airport. Airports are so expensive and we can never like find a cheap place to eat at the no, airport. Never. We've tried many times. Even McDonald's we've tried, but it's always more expensive than where you would get like something yeah. at the grocery store for a snack. So just pack them in your bag, easy, some crackers, some nuts, maybe even a granola bar or two. Maybe you can bribe the person next to you with a granola bar, mm -hmm. <laughs> become friends with them. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that snacks are very important, so be sure to pack that along. Begin to schedule your sleep patterns for your destination. If you're flying to a different time zone, there's this thing called jet lag. Maybe you've heard of it. It's when you fly to a completely different country, someplace far away, 10, 12 hours, and you, are, you arrive when it's morning time, but you've flown all night and you didn't sleep at all. That's my tip. It's something I do. We've flown to Asia. We've flown to Europe several times now, and I've never really had bad jet lag. Maybe I'm blessed, but I like to attribute it to this tactic. So what you do is, when you know where you're headed, you look at the time schedule, the time difference. You say, okay, I'm leaving at 8 p.m. When I arrive, it's gonna be 8 a.m. So basically, all you do is do everything you possibly can to sleep during that flight. 
Maybe you need to stay up late the day before. Maybe you need to exercise really hard before you get onto the plane. Pack a neck pillow, bring some headphones, listen to water fountain sounds. Whatever it takes, try and sleep on that flight. And that way when you get to your destination, you wake up with the sun in the location that you're coming to and you just power through the next day, no matter how tired you are, go to bed no earlier than 9 p.m., fall asleep, sleep for 12 hours, and then wake up the next day like a normal human being. It's the best way that I know how to avoid jet lag. There is a natural pill called melatonin that we have used in the past and it also works very, very well. It's helpful. Yeah. The trick with melatonin is after you take it, you have to try to fall asleep. It will not put you to sleep. Take some time out for yourself. A flight is not a place where you have like a lot of things that you can do. So if you like to read, if you like to listen to music, if you like to listen to podcasts, um, if you want to download a movie you've been really wanting to watch but haven't had the opportunity, this is the time. Take the time for yourself when you're on a flight. You know, it's already stressful enough to be going somewhere new and um, go through the whole process. So just put your mind on yourself and take a little time. I myself, I love listening to podcasts. I love, um, I'm always sure to charge all of my different yeah. things before I get on a flight so that I'm able to do different things. Also, when you're doing these things, I like to use my headphones that are noise canceling because oh. when you're in economy, there are children, babies, um, digging, and really a lot of just extra noise. It's crazy when I put my no noise canceling on. I had Josh just do it this last time. How much sound you don't realize is there, but it cancels it out and it's just so much easier to focus and enjoy your time while you're on a flight. It's incredible how much a $60 pair of rechargeable wireless noise canceling headphones will make your flight more comfortable. I've only worn hers for about five minutes and I wanted to <laughs> steal them, even though they're like gold and girly. They're, they're amazing. Noise canceling headphones is key. Yeah, it really helps on an economy flight mm -hmm. for sure. And our last tip, our 11th tip, a bonus tip is, hold on, what was it? Oh, oh yeah. What? My gum. Um, that's what I'm doing. Oh, you are? Yeah. There you go. It's to bring gum. <laughs> I know it sounds like something you've probably heard before, but if your ears are sensitive or if you've ever experienced just discomfort, you can use gum to help relieve the air pressure that builds up as you descend. Your mm. ears will actually do it naturally as you ascend. But in addition to that, chewing gum is a little bit like a fidget spinner or something that you can just do, right? When you chew, it takes your mind off of what's currently happening. So if you're feeling stressed about taking off or landing, or if there is bad turbulence, chewing gum literally is a stress reliever. You go from chewing like slowly enjoying it to like <laughs> chewing really fast. <laughs> it gives you something to do and hopefully you won't grind your teeth as much. So take some chewing gum, whether it's to relieve uh, ear pressure that's built up or to yeah. relieve some stress. And this is actually a great chip, tip for children because they can just chew the gum and their ears will automatically um, go with the whatever it's called. Yeah. yeah that. All right, you guys, this has been our top tips for making the most out of your economy flight to being the most comfortable yeah. when you're buying cheap airline tickets. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Guys, I have been Josh Brown. I'm Ashley. This is The Way Away. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't help but yeah. <laughs> A little something extra. Yeah. You couldn't just leave it. <laughs> no.